Welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Macau has gone through a complex year, filled with accomplishments, challenges, and changes in its social structure. With us tonight to speak about the year that is now wrapping up is social scientist and political commentator, Dr. Larry So. Originally from Hong Kong, but in Macau since around 2002, the retired professor spent years with the Macau Polytechnic Institute and is here tonight to share some of his, some of his wisdom on the changes we've witnessed in 2018 and those which are still to come. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Um, I want to start off with a, a, a phrase that's very, very commonly used in, in Macau and in Hong Kong and yeah. predominantly in China, speaking of Macau and Hong Kong, one country, two systems. Yeah. Uh, we've witnessed quite a few changes in Macau and in Hong Kong. Um, do you see Macau as becoming more like one country than it has, let's say, in previous years? I would agree to that, you know, to that, that statement. Uh, of course, um, when we look at when we compare Hong Kong and Macau, Hong Kong is more like, you know, um, going towards the, the so-called one country. Mm -hmm. In Macau, we still have a little bit of so-called um, one country, two system, the, the kind of uh, concept. But then, of course, in terms of uh, the, um, I shouldn't say that it is an intervention, but the, the influence from mm -hmm. the cent central government, it is more uh, toward the, the government and the policy and the, the, the thinking or the philosophy of the ruling, so-called the governance mm -hmm. of the local government, I mean, that is in you know, Macau, is very, very, very much towards, you know, quote, unquote, the Chinese way. Mm -hmm. So, and this Chinese way it is, in fact, you know, we are moving towards more and more so-called the one country. And of course, now, um, having, having talked about, you know, it seems that we are being try. it looks like we are being pressed and forced into the one country, but it's, I don't think that is the case. Mm -hmm. It is that we are moving together. But of course, okay. uh, Macau is moving a little bit more than the central government. So we are, in a way, um, you know, when we look at all the administration, and especially um, when we have the so-called legal system, which is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we can date back to the Portuguese government, which is, you know, the, the philosophy of the, the um, legal system. Mm -hmm. and, in, and that legal system is, in fact, very much like uh, with China. Mm -hmm. So in that case, so but when we are looking at from the legal point of view, uh, Macau is very, very much like China. When we compare Hong Kong, they are using the so-called common law. Mm -hmm. Then common law system is quite different with the central government system. Mm -hmm. So that's why they do have a, you know, a lot of conflicts over here. And that's why we say, well, they, they are very much alike and they are very, very much alike, you know, the kind of being pressed and pushed towards the so-called, quote, one country. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the difference between uh, Hong Kong and Macau. But then the, um, back to your statement earlier to say, now I will agree to that because we are more and more uh, looks like China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, within legislation itself, mm -hmm. within the, the things that have been that are being enacted, that are have already been enacted this year or will be coming into action next year, we've seen a lot of things that particularly have to do with, let's say, getting closer to the one country. Um, we have the National Security Committee, the creation of the National Security Committee. Exactly. Uh, we have Article Twenty Three, which has already been in, in place already in Macau. Already yeah. um, the, the new National Emblem, Anthem, and Symbol Bill. Mm -hmm. um, that's, now that's something in particular which, which seems to be a very, very uh, visible sign that, yes. that we are, and teaching children in schools about the national history and, and learning of the, of the anthem and everything. Mm -hmm. um, what about, is, is this process accelerating? Yes, to, to a very large extent. Uh, let's, let's say, you know, Article 23. Now, we have that, you know, already, you know, a couple of years earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, we passed the law. And so there, there isn't any problem when we pass the law. And yeah. like Hong Kong, we do have a lot of issues yes. over there. But then, okay, <laughs> back to Macau. Now, that Article 23, no problem. But then it, um, it, it comes up that, you know, this year. And the, the Secretary for the uh, 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 Security, security well, he's trying to say, well, we need to re quote unquote really kind of, kind of implement it or mm -hmm. enforce it. Yeah. So this is you know very much like that um, because we are talking there, they are kind of afraid or they don't want anything that is so called the independence, mm -hmm. Hong Kong independence, yes. Macau and all all these so called independence movement mm -hmm. that is you know, are quite, you know a kind of a social movement in the West. 
So in that case, we are looking at the so-called Article 23, the enforcing, and we are very, very much like you know China right now because mm -hmm. this is the central policy in China saying that well, uh, we are not going to tolerate any so-called independency, mm -hmm. and Macau is following suit. So it is you know that kind of things that we look at. Well, are we really you know two system? Mm -hmm. in, that doesn't look really like, but then, but then, of course, the explanation from them is that, or the rationale from them, is that, well, um, the one country superimposed two systems. Yes. The Constitution is above the basic law. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But are we, we're not like Hong Kong. We're not making a fuss. We don't have as many activists <laughs> yes. out calling for independence. We no. don't have almost any. Um, so is it is this are these measures justified? Is the extent to which things are being shaped uh, is there rationale behind it, or is it purely just to follow in line with the one country? I think we are just following the line. You know, this is a cent the, the central party line, mm -hmm. and um, and it is expected Hong Kong and Macau they should follow suit and they shouldn't say no to it or anything, uh, saying that well we are two system because mm -hmm. as we said earlier. One country superimpose two system. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the, the, the basic thinking right now, as in Hong Kong or and as in Macau. What about in terms of the the chief executive election coming up next year? That's going to be a pivotal moment for Macau. We're going to see who the next one is. Do you have any Do, do you have any expectations for who is going to be the next chief executive? I think the community do have a general saying right now. We have two candidates. I mean, the kind of, that is what is the, the the community people they talk about it, and of, and of course, um, each of them they do have their own specialties, and mm -hmm. each of them they do have the you know the kind of. Um, their own philosophy of a governance, and well, it's too early to say who who should be the one. But then we all know that um, when the next CEO should be, first of all, uh, that is very much concerned with the community mm -hmm. because we are facing the so-called. I mean, it's not exactly that that um, to the extent that we are facing poverty and all these things. Mm -hmm. But in terms of livelihood, I think a lot of people are having you no. Know, complaints about it and this livelihood including the, the wages and including the daily life which include uh, we are talking about the transportation we are mm -hmm. talking about too many tourists now all these things now I mean when we are looking at the new CEO should he should that particular person should have a kind of thinking that they will resolve all these problems but then of course he got to be very, very grassroots oriented mm -hmm. in the sense that um, we don't want any. I mean, the, the community would say that we don't want we don't want somebody from the top and then knowing nothing about the the, the grassroots people. Mm -hmm. And in, in fact, in the past, you know, one of the complaints about the um, the the government the, the, the government in itself is that uh, they are not very grassroots oriented and they are kind of what should I say? Um, in the Chinese way of saying is they are off the ground. Okay. <laughs> they didn't touch yeah. the ground at all. They're not in touch with the reality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. All right. So this is the, the issue that we are looking at, especially when we are talking about the new CEO. Mm -hmm. The new CEO, now, um, we have a lot of money right now. Yes. The, C the new CEO got to know how to spend the money. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, everybody knows in Macau, we, unlike other places, we, all we have is money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, of course, having all, got all this money, how do you use this money? And how this money can, you know, really to bring down mm -hmm. to the people? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the that's whole issue. In the past, we found that we've been talking about trickling theory, of which I don't agree with, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't think the tripling effect will happen. But still, the government is saying that, uh, well, the, the money is tripling down, tripling down to the people. Okay, if that be the case, I think the new CEO should really have, have this thing happen, mm -hmm. that the people can really benefit, not giving them, you know, 9,000, 10,000, like, you know, every year. ask you about that. That is, yeah. you know, nothing, not That's, the issue. Could that be a form of proof that the trickle-down effect is not actually happening? I would say that yes, because if they really trickle down, 
I mean, people got have money in the pocket, and they say, "Well, we don't need the ten thousand." Mm. But then the government do see that, well, they need the nine thousand, eight thousand, or ten thousand, mm -hmm. because they do see a, quite a number of people, especially those who are the low income uh, families, they do need that particular, you know, bonus, mm -hmm. of which I think. You know, as I always said, I don't agree with this policy. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I know that this ten thousand or nine thousand dollar in the past, um, they really help the low income family. That is one thing for sure. And I mean, you spend a lot of time on the front line as a social worker. Yes, uh, mm. you faced in in multiple countries. Uh, yes, and um, mm. looking at the current outlook for Macau and for Macau citizens in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lower class families, we have middle lower class families, we even have middle, middle class families. Mm -hmm. And, and they talk, the government talks a lot about um, scaling the management ladder, in particular when they're referring to the casinos. Oh, yes. But uh, we see SMEs closing or being subsidized by the government in order to maintain their operations. Exactly. We see mm -hmm. Uh, many, many, many businesses open and opening and closing despite having solid business ideas. The, what is the prospect like for the average person from Macau or who has moved to Macau who is middle class, so let's say over the next decade? Now, I mean, for the middle class, I mean, they can, they uh, will and they can maintain as a middle class, but mm -hmm. eventually would they become, um, you know, the downward mm -hmm. going down, you know, the, the the theory that, you know, we have the damn theory. Yeah, so, would that be the case? I would see that if the property market, you know, still go on like right now, even though we know that today, well, the, the property market is not going all the way up, but then mm -hmm. it's stabilized. But even though the stabilizer is, you know, very, very expensive to buy the house and you need a lot of money, any middle class people now, if they, if they want to become middle class and they maintain as you know middle class as middle, mm -hmm. I think they will have a problem. Okay. So we are facing, you know, the kind of society that are splitting into the two, mm -hmm. the one percent who got everything, and the rest who don't have anything. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, in in a form of way to, the 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 line that's been used is in order to promote the the Greater Bay Area in particular to help alleviate some of the problems in affording housing, both in Hong Kong and Macau. The central government has in particular said, okay, we're going to have the Greater Bay Area. People will be able to travel and work within a what one hour circle or three hour circle, mm -hmm. um, and that that will alleviate some of the problems. Does it create more problems than it alleviates? Maybe creating more problems than, than really, you know, the, the, the effect of alleviating problems, you know, getting rid of the problems. Now, first of all, Greater Bay Area, uh, yes, for the economic development, for the benefit of the, you know, cities mm -hmm. in this area, well, we can see the, the definitely and positive benefit, you know, having a kind of alliance, having, you know, joined together. Mm -hmm. um, joining force is always, you know, is good for the development. But then, of course, we are talking about this is economic development. But then we look at the uh, livelihood issues. We are talking about just now, for example, housing. Uh, can with the Bay Area solve the housing problem? I can't see that, you know, that is mm -hmm. really the case. Because we are talking about, can we, I mean, if it is a one, a one hour circle, so we can um, work here or live here. And then, so for example, we can work in Macau and then we live in somewhere uh, in the Greater Bay Area. But is, is it feasible, first of all, in terms of the um, transportation we do have right now, for, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, now, look at the bridge now. I mean, the, the, the great bridge we have, is, yes, we, for traveling the bridge from one end to the other end, it takes less than an hour. Mm -hmm. But then it, if you are living in Taipara or something, mm -hmm. you take another, another hour at least to go to the border. Mm -hmm. So are we talking about two hours? Mm -hmm. So how many two hours single trip we have every day? Mm -hmm. in, do we, are we talking about four hours in terms of you know, daily transportation in order to get to work and go back home? Uh, that is not particularly realistic, mm -hmm. first of all. And secondly, we are also talking about, you know, we do have a big Bay area. We have, in Macau, we have more land uh, more lands that we can, you know, make use of somewhere else. 
Mm -hmm. So we, we are talking about, oh, let's have, you know, elderly home and all these things move into this with the Bay Area. But my thinking would be, shall, should we transport or should we export mm -hmm. our social problem to somewhere else? Exactly, and separate families at the same time. Yes, exactly. I, I mean, we are separating family on one hand and exporting social problem, mm -hmm. which is elderly, to somewhere else. Uh, to you know nearby uh, mm -hmm. cities and we are making use of their cities facilities and mm -hmm. we are not paying anything yet so it is it is it fair mm -hmm. but then looking at from that particular city's angle I think they would say no because you are giving me problems you are not enhancing me my our economic development mm -hmm. and all these things so um, this is not a realistic thing to really talk, about, I mean, to really work on it in in the larger scale, that uh, we export all these, you know, elderly old people, you know, like myself, got to export to somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> I mean, as an elderly, as a senior, I, I would, you know, rather say, no, why do you want to get me, kick me out? <laughs> because I still like this uh, community, and you are kicking me out by, you know, saying that no, these facilities is better. Mm -hmm and you can come back within an hour. Mm -hmm. But then, is that the case? I, don't, I, I would have you know, strong reservation on that. In, in regards to, um, to they've, they've spoken about uh, making a more fluid border and, and almost eliminating the borders entirely. Uh, this, this coming before 2049, when Macau would return entirely to the mainland. Um, for the people that are here, that are non-Chinese um, citizens, uh, but are, are residents of Macau, permanent residents of Macau. Mm -hmm. um, there have been, not rumors, there have been opinions that they will no longer have, they will no longer maintain their residency after 2049. Would that be at all advantageous to take away the residency from the permanent residents of Macau by 2049 to Macau society? <laughs> no, I mean, no. Uh, first of all, it, right now we do have the law that, you know, if. A uh, permanent resident, if you stay here for, for seven years, mm -hmm. you know, you can become a quote citizen. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you, the problem, I mean, a lot of, pro a lot of these problems can be solved. Mm -hmm. But then still we're talking about the, the case, you know, uh, after 40, you know, 2049, should we have, a, you know, um, so-called non-Chinese but permanent resident? Mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, still far away, but that, that is not a good thing that we are really are looking at because if they are, I mean, you've been living here for quite some time, and unless you don't want to become uh, a citizen in this particular area, mm -hmm. and uh, why shouldn't they be not allowed to become, you know, simply because becoming, you know, a part of the Chinese, you know, population, mm -hmm. simply because of the skin color or the hair color? I mean, uh, that would be a kind of discrimination we are talking about, and that is something. Uh, right now, we don't like Donald Trump because he's doing something like that. I, I mean, I'm talking about it a bit too far. <laughs> Come back to Macau. <laughs> it's it's relevant. It's relevant. I mean, yeah, I mean, this the global of, world that we live in now. Mm -hmm. It is one. It is you know, I mean, this globalization, mm -hmm. and um, if we are looking at you know different color of people, or you seem to have a different like, you know kind of cuts that you have, and then we say you are different. So that is not. I mean, um, but. By 2049, if we are still have that kind of, you know, so, kind, I mean, we, that kind of thinking, and without the, that kind of, you know, globalized thinking, um, that means that Macau hasn't, been, hasn't, you know, really going on the globalization and developing. And, this, and I don't want to see that. Mm. Now, we are known for having less, mm. uh, let's say, activism in response oh, to yes. some, of, some of the policies that are taken. Mm. And uh, I mean, just by the fact that Article 23 was passed in Macau and not in Hong Kong is mm -hmm. um, more testament to that. Mm. Uh, Carrie Lam has been very vocal. I mean, Hong Kong's agenda has always been to pass Article yes. 23. Mm -hmm. um, but she has said, OK, we're going to push for it next year. Uh, is there any chance of that happening? Well, with Carrie Lam, everything everything is possible. Um, he's strong. He he pushed a lot of things. <clears throat> Even though you know, uh, I mean, he's been. I mean, she's been trying to push it because, of course, there will be very very strong uh, resistance in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And 
by, the, by next year, would, he, would she do that? I think she would try to test water, you know, try to a little bit of, you know, kind of thing, you know, saying that, well, I'm going to try and see the, the community reaction. Mm -hmm. would it, is it like the same as was in the past? In the past, the sentiment is, you know, definitely no. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, they've been doing a lot of work underground and in, in the grassroots level. And in fact, you know, the poll establishment camp, mm -hmm. uh, they have been doing quite a lot of work in the grassroots. So I think the sentiment has a little, uh, changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But would it change to that extent that um, the Article 23 will be passed next year? I don't think so. Because we are still looking at, you know, uh, the middle class people in Hong Kong now they have very very you know strong reservation mm -hmm. and in fact some of the young people middle class young people they are moving out of Hong Kong now mm -hmm. they immigrate to somewhere else so that is a way of saying that they they don't trust they don't think the government um, would you know the kind of um, very much like the democratic government. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are the kind of sentiment, and if you still push the, the, the Article 23, would it mean that we are, I mean, Hong Kong, they are trying to kicking out a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. And these are the, and of course, we, in Hong Kong say, well, we, we don't mind kicking out Hong Kong people because a lot of young people in China, they will, they will come in They're using the so-called talent scheme. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, if that be the case, then, that is not Hong Kong we are talking mm -hmm. about right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A complete social structure change, yes. mm -hmm. which, which is something that we're, we have seen over the course of the past, mm -hmm. well, since about 2001, the liberalization of gaming and, mm -hmm. and the whole change within what was once kind of more of a sleepy Macau <laughs> to what is now the booming Macau. Exactly. Um, that's brought, aside from political problems, that's also brought a, a, some, a lot of other problems, um, mm -hmm. such as gambling disorders. Mm -hmm. um, for for the upcoming license retendering scheme, that there's always a political element to that as well. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> but um, there there isn't much information as to how that's going to happen. They still have to rewrite legislation. Um, but do you do you think that for one, are they going to push the licenses back to 2022, and is that going to have a any political connotation also? No, there's no connotation, a political connotation. Mm -hmm. But then, in fact, it's make it more fair. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the. I think the government, by the time next year, uh, he will kind of uh, announce that, well, um, the tendering procedure will start at 22. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, uh, they got to extend the, right now the two licenses that, that is going to expire by next year. So I think that will be the, the process. But then, in terms of the political saying that, well, um, would there be a new license, you know, mm -hmm. the, or additional license, or could there be any changes in, you know, Right now we do have six, but that doesn't mean that this six license can, you know, automatically tender and then they call it the tender. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would there be any changes? Uh, I've now, in the past, I mean, talking about especially um, before before 2010, and uh, quite a number, a number of people in the community they've been complaining that the so-called quote unquote the Western influence or mm -hmm. the Western people. Um, especially the American, uh, they got all the money, especially, you know, they, they have all the money, they have all the profit, and they are not investing back into Macau nor in China, mm -hmm. but then they take all the money all the way back to, to Las Vegas and they construct their own, you know, empire over there. Mm -hmm. They are using the Chinese money, the people's money, and they spend there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of complaint about that, but then of course, um, Right now, we, see, we do see that the so-called the American uh, um, <clears throat> counterparts here, and they are kind of um, giving more and more to the community you know, mm -hmm. by trying, you know, uh, incorporating all these SME and I'm uh, going to buy, you know, products from, from your company and, and then uh, doing a, lot, a, bit, a little bit more in the corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. more social service and donating a, a little bit more money. But then all these things happen is, uh, when we, when the government starts saying that you now we are going to have the license review, yes, you know, and we see all the money going coming in, uh -huh. and well, well, of course this a show, but mm -hmm. then of course, the, uh, they do benefit a little bit to the community. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. the show or not, the, the, I, I, I won't say it's good or bad, but show or not, and the community's benefit is good enough. Mm -hmm. 
okay, now, do we have the new license? But then one of the, one of the big shots in, in, how, in the lo local community, and he mentioned that he would like, he would mm -hmm. love to have, you know, oh, a, yeah. a new license. Mm -hmm. So would he be the person that can, you know, have strong pressure or influence in the central government as well as the local government? And we put in another additional one. Mm -hmm. So the issue comes back to the, to the basic thing. Could we afford it? Or mm -hmm. could the community, you know, the kind of infrastructure can really support, we are talking about seven. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you know, looking at them from the income side, the more the merrier. But, the, but then looking at the um, community development and mm -hmm. the people's quality of life, now we should really look about it and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good that we, um, the tendering, the whole tendering procedure coming at 22. We still have a little bit of time. And the government hasn't been saying anything, especially that they said, well, um, you know, Couple of, two years ago, he said that what well, we, they said um, they will stop the the, uh, the tendering thing. Mm -hmm. He he kind of mentioned that there is a, a study by the um, uh, University of Macau mm -hmm. that they are going to you know to see the, the licensing things. But I, I'm not sure whether they include the quality of life and all, and all these things. Mm -hmm. but, but we haven't seen that report yet. But maybe I mean the report got to be in the government, but has. I don't think there has been any you know, release or talk about that research. So I would love to see that research, you know, that is related with how if we have six or seven, how are we going to um, really guarantee the quality of life of the people mm -hmm. in the community? Well, and, and not increase gambling disorder. Mm -hmm. um, the, yes. There was a recent study that showed that you know it's automatically a certain percentage of the population that has g gambling disorder, yes. and they associate many of them as, as croupiers or linked yes. working in the buildings. Now they recently passed passed the law, but it's, it's only implemented next year for the yeah. ban on gaming workers on the casino floor. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's a good thing? Oh yes, yes. I mean, um, now um, before we have all these things, I mean, you know, there were there was only one license, and mm -hmm. at that time. It is a strict rule for them that you know any dealer or any person that you are working in the casino mm -hmm. or, or you know the, the industry, you cannot go to gamble uh, in any of the the, 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 the uh, casinos. Mm -hmm. But then when we have six now, they can't they can't enforce it. Yeah. So I mean, um, in the past, so when we look at in the past, and we don't have that many uh, professional gambler, but. After the 2004, and then we are moving, you know, all the way right now, the 10, 10 or more years, and we do see the increased number of um, pathological gambler, especially for those who are working in the casino. Mm -hmm. So this is well, this is a problem now. Mm -hmm. So banning them from going back into the, in the casino, oh, that is, you know, a negative kind of way of, you know, enhance enforcing, but still, it can prevent from, you know, that kind of pathological gambling. Now, it's interesting that Choi Sayon himself said, uh, we, my government, while I, when I came into my government, I said that we would not change the, the rule of only locals being croupiers. Yes. Um, it's interesting that he said, I, my, and this government. Do you think that that's a hint that they might see, we might see a change in the locals only croupier rule? The, the pressure from these casino people from the industry is really, really strong. And especially when, if we are looking at, uh, there might be one more license, and we are talking about hundreds of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, dealers, new dealers, and um, there's a lot of complaints in the communities that all these things, I mean, all these casino attracting the young people, and these young people graduate or not, you know, they go into the casino, and that's it. And on the, on the other side of the community, the commercial sector and all these things, they are stuck complaining and complaining, we don't have enough manpower. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of saying that we might, you know, recruit people from outside. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, that is not an easy job for him because the Federation of Trade Union, I don't mm -hmm. think they will, you know, they will yeah. give in in this area. <laughs> yeah. so, there, so that is one more issue we are talking about. We are, if we are talking about this, a new license, apart from six, you know, 
and that that new nice and we are talking about hundreds of new jobs mm -hmm. and do we have that kind of uh, uh, manpower for them especially when we are talking about uh, we a number of you know the, the you know the dealers you cannot have anybody from outside that means we have to train a lot of young people that means we are crawling all these people from to the first graduate from the universities from mm -hmm. the colleges and what happened like you know and uh, old 2005 2006 we at that time as a teacher and i've been complaining and complaining because our students simply they, some of them they haven't graduated and they go into mm -hmm. the serious good mm -hmm. and stable job why not mm -hmm. but then they keep the same job for 20 years <laughs> that they, 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 they don't know and they don't care and yeah. because they haven't they haven't really understand you know the glass ceiling issue um, unfortunately, much like the year, we also have to wrap, <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> yes. um, I wanted to ask you one last thing. From, from, what, hap from what we've seen over the course of 2018, there were, there were some bad things, there were some good things. Mm -hmm. In terms of the good things, what do you think was one of the solid achievements that Macau itself was able to achieve, either in a societal sense, political sense, or otherwise? I think in terms of the, the, uh, all these the big infrastructure building, we mm -hmm. do have problems, but then we do have the, the bridge. Mm -hmm. Now this new bridge is, you know, really something that connect the so-called the Victor Bay area. Mm -hmm. So one thing good about Macau, I mean, in the past is that we do, we really found, you know, our position, that is to say, uh, where we should go. Mm -hmm. Now we shouldn't think of any any other things apart from entertainment, you know, this, you know, tourist resort, that kind of thinking. Yes, that is the the core. I think the government. In, has been in the past few years, they've been wavering a little bit, but now I think it is very, very solid. So I hope this is this will be become the central policy, and all these things will go around that area. And of course, that comes into a negative things is that infrastructure has been building only for the you know economic return. Mm -hmm. Those who don't have economic return, like housing you know, all these things, the government is doing very, very bad, and I, would, and I would give him a fail mark. <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have new, new public housing. And people has, you know, I mean, the, 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 the low-income family, they've been really suffering. And I mean, suffering in the sense that now we look at the quality of life hasn't been improved. Instead, the GDP coming all the way up. So we are differentiate the people and people are looking at the TV wow we have a lot of money but these are not my money mm -hmm. so but these are in fact our money so this is the poor thing that our government in the, in the past year they really really has been doing well they have a whole other year next year to fix it <laughs> I hope so. let's, I let's hope, hope so. for the best mm -hmm. thank you again for being on the you're show. welcome mm -hmm. From the whole team here at the TDM Talk Show, we wish you a happy 2018 and a fruitful upcoming 2019. Thank you. Good night.